All right. This is going to be one of my most memorable interviews ever because <laughs> Lindsay here has built this masterpiece for me and we're going to talk about his banjo building, uh, how he got started, where he's from, and just kind of a little bit of everything banjo, really. Yeah. Uh, we're here in Brasstown, North Carolina at the folk school, the John Campbell folk school. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And that's a what, almost a hundred years now that school's been going on, I believe. Yes, 1925 is when it yeah. started. Oh, okay. So we're getting close. Yep. Three years or so, then we're, we'll hit that mark. And you'll hear the noise. We're outside. The festival just ended. It's windy, but we're, we're making it work. So, yep. uh, Lindsay, where should we start? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, you, you caught interest at a young age of just building or just music in general or both? Well, I guess my my mom played banjo or plays, mom and dad, both my parents do. And um, they've been playing since before I was born. So I've been around it. Dad always says that they started prenatally <laughs> with the, <laughs> raising, getting their kids around. And uh, so I, I definitely heard the vibrations then whether I, I didn't have a choice you know i couldn't, couldn't go anywhere <laughs> yep and uh and then i grew up here actually at the school and right down the road from here and um when i was growing up i i didn't really want to have nothing to do with it i was like played drums in a punk rock band and you know i was like <laughs> dyed my hair and all this I was like i didn't want to have anything to do with craft or old timer or music or i played different different music but um and then i i moved up to Asheville and I've been living in Asheville for a while and playing music in bands and stuff. I got a degree in classical percussion and was touring around and I did that for a while. And then I kind of got to the point where I was tired of being gone all the time and being broke all the time. And I mean, it was fun, you know, but started thinking about what the next step was going to be or whatever. And I noticed I kept coming home a lot back here to my, my family's got some, a little farm down the road from here. And I'd come home on the weekends and I'd come home, you know, every time I get a break or I'd take off work and come home and I started building this little tree house. It started to be tree house. And then, and then I built to the ground and then I built up and put a roof on it and then framed it and insulated. So now it's like a little cabin yeah. and, uh, I, I saw like off grid and everything. And I come home every chance I got to be there and be a part of it. And it was just real peaceful. And I started feeling drawn towards being back. So then I quit my job up in Asheville and spent a summer here living in my Volkswagen bus and building my tree house, you know, grown up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun to me. Yeah, no, it was a blast. <laughs> and uh, I said, I think I'm gonna come back. And um, my dad was like, well, don't come back without a job because you can go and find one here, you know? So then I really started thinking about what I wanted to do. And I was playing so much music all the time and always interested in it and building and stuff. So I said, I think I'm gonna start building, building banjos, you know? So then I, when I decided that's what I wanted to do, I went back to school at Haywood College and I got a degree in, or diploma in fine woodworking. So, so it's a professional crafts program. Yeah. So that I could learn how to build and, and not be like trying to figure it out or make it up as I went along. I just wanted a good foundation. So I graduated from that and then I relocated back here permanently and uh, built me a little shop and got started and it opened up the business, got the business going. And that was in like 2017, I think, something like that. Yeah. So you've been building banjos ever since. Yeah. And it seems, based online, uh, it looks like it's taken off quite a bit, a lot of interest there. Yeah, it's taken off. You know, it's, uh, they're different. They're, they're totally, I mean, with the art, color and change and all the background and stuff, they're completely different. And, you know, some people don't get like them or, you know, get it or whatever. And that, you know, that's all right. It's not necessarily for everybody, but the ones that, that are starting to take a like to it seem to really, really enjoy it. The yeah. aesthetics of them and stuff and the way they sound and play. So recently here, it's been really starting to pick up a lot. And then I do little workshops too. So people come and stay for a week at my, shop and we'll build a banjo together in a week and they go home with one come out in the country live out in the country for a week and make an instrument and go home <laughs> and those have been really popular too that's yeah fun. that's what i'm gonna do next yeah <laughs> yeah we should probably uh give a little shout out to charlie marks 
he was the one uh, I believe that first posted a picture online and I saw the banjo that you had made him mm -hmm. and I haven't really seen anything quite like it and uh, so I started doing a little research on your yeah. on you and I was just like okay this guy has woodworking background knows what he's doing there but he also plays and he and he knows the music so perfect blend you know what you're talking yeah. about you know what you're doing yeah uh, so Try I went to. with it I went with it good and, uh, yeah so far I'm happy with the, the outcome yeah. of the way this one turned out anyway yep yep uh, we should probably dissect this go sure. over it show show a couple different features yeah all right um, I'll well, let you take this. I'm okay. going to grab the camera and get a close-up here. All right. Sounds good. So this banjo here is a 12-inch pot. It's got a goatskin head, adjustable tailpiece, one of my Mohair Craft uh, bridges, continuous leg bridge. This is called the, the Blue Ridge. You can see because of the Blue Ridge. It's like themed from the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's got the art Blue Ridge artwork in the back here. This is a model that we do. And um, all this artwork here is a part of what comes with the banjo. That's one of the things that kind of mohair and banjos do that it you know, breaks them apart a little bit. This is a sculpted dowel stick that I do. It's just a little aesthetic thing that I like. This here is called a dampening controller. So it's got a knob there and you turn the knob and it's got a little felt pad here and that felt pad presses up against the back of the head and it gets rid of those overtones. So you can turn it on or off completely or you can have just a little bit so you actually have control. The idea is the, the dampening of the head's not necessarily a new idea but people would just stuff something back there and, and um, to get rid of those overtones but then you didn't really have an option as far as if you wanted a lot or a little bit, it was just, you had not all or nothing. So I came up with this little idea from drums, from a drum set that gave you control over that. Um, it's got this, the, the heel is a tra traditional heel, trad heel. And I do my own little sculpting here. And it's got a burl, uh, veneer burl cap over the, over the uh, heel there. It's got a stained heel, it's a cherry neck. Stained here, it's a paddle peg head. And I antique the uh, the neck to give it the old feel or an old sense. I antique all the hardware, antique all this hardware, everything's antiqued and it gives it a sense of, of being old. I like things that are old, but function, you know, new, like pro properly, they stay in tune, they hold tune, they're easy to tune, they play nice, they, they sound nice but they have a sense of a really old, old feeling. And this was what Justin did a custom here. He wanted, so we worked together and developed this beautiful scoop for him. So he's got his name in the, in the uh, scoop there. That's an acid etched scoop. And then we've done some abalone inlay that a friend of mine gave me that from New Zealand, actually. He donated all those for me to use for this model. And then your tell us a little bit about your yeah so coin there this piece here we were trying to come up with an idea and this is a Sacagawea coin which isn't very valuable per se or anything like that but uh it belonged to my grandpa and he passed away and my dad ended up with it and he passed it down to me so that one will stay with me uh you yeah. know just one of those family heirloom things that hang out uh so yeah, you've got it's quite special. a connection to this this banjo here. Yep. And the bridge and mm hmm piece. Yep, and then we antique this armrest here to make it kind of fit in with everything. And uh it's a twenty five point three four scale. Um it's got a twenty degree peg head angle back here, which is a little bit steeper and it pulls it down there a little bit more that mixed with the tailpiece pulling it here gets a nice transition of, of sound really really nice transition of energy and i would say i build my banjos for like a warm warm and plunky kind of sound like i really like them to have clarity and distinction of note but 
not that really high end trebly sound. So that the goat skin head and all that helps with that and the depth of the pot. It's a maple maple pot, um, 12 inch. And it sounds like this. Sounds amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so what, what, let me, I just gotta hold these more. Yeah, just, just hold it, man. so just good. Uh, the yeah. weight, I'll, I'll say it from my end of it, um, you know, you can look online all day and see pictures and he sent me some stuff. I've been on his website, uh, which you, you should probably plug that. Oh right yeah, now. the uh, <laughs> website is actually Mulher and Banjos. Mulher and Banjos. Yeah, get the sticker out. So this is the, the name here you can just google google that um Mulheron is my middle name so that's where the name comes from it was my grandmother's maiden name and uh i had it you know growing up it was kind of an interesting name i didn't really necessarily like it that much and <laughs> you didn't tell I, your friends yeah i didn't tell my <laughs> friends no. and um but as I got older, I started really being a little drawn towards it more and more. And now I, I really like it. I feel like it's a good representation. It sounds, you know, it's an old name. It's it kind of part of the heritage and the aesthetic that I like, just kind of that feeling and stuff. So, but yeah, you can just search Mulher and Banjos and you'll see a link to my website. Yeah. So what I was getting at, you see all that, even online. It really quite doesn't do it justice. Having this in my hands and looking at it close, uh, it's just an amazing piece of work. And like you said, not only is it pretty, it's functional, highly functional. And uh, um, I won't be ashamed to play it. Good. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll, you. I'm not just going to hang it on the wall and never touch it again. I, I'm, I'm going to play it. You know, Take it out there in the world and it's what it's meant to be. Yes. Just get ready because everybody's going to ask you about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Get ready. It's, it's unique for sure. Um, so we should back up a little bit too. What, I mean, what styles do you offer as far as like you you cut the wood down you yep. told me that this is harvested here in yep. in the mountains yep um what what types do you offer like different banjo styles or uh, well types? types of wood that oh um to the region basically mainly walnut and cherry well those are the two okay. that i really like the most i like working with them the most they're really really beautiful beautiful wood they're very stable they're a hardwood um, so they make really good banjo necks and they're not necessarily super heavy. Um, I also use mahogany a fair amount because um, mahogany is a very stable wood too, but it's very soft. It's easy to like carve and shape, but it's stable. And you're really just looking for something that's going to not have a lot of movement to it. Yeah. Um, maple I use as well. I'm having a harder time kind of coming across maple lately anyways, um, but I've used a lot of maple too. Um, but those are the those are the main types of wood that I that I generally use. Um, I'll do the traditional Dobson heels and the the uh, tradition. Tra I call that the trad heel, the sculpted trad heel. Those are my kind of two signature heels. Um, I did just get an order from uh, um, Steve Arkin. Unfortunately, he just passed, but he's the banjo player from Troublesome Creek String Band one of my favorite bands if you haven't ever heard troublesome creek they're in my opinion probably the one of the best old time bands ever and okay. i was at clifftop and we became buds and i ran we started playing music together and sure enough he played a few of my banjos and they come hang out in my booth and all this stuff and he ended up ordering one and um and i was super excited and we were talking and chatting and then he ended up passing away yeah. like a week after it was such a such a roller coaster but He's got me into the, making a, what's called a coal heel, and it's it's like a boat a boat shaped heel. So I'm about to start that one too, 
kind of in honor of him. And I'm still going to build the banjo. Um, I have the list of everything that he wanted, all his order and everything. And we're still going to build it. And I'm going to donate half the money to the charity that his wife is going to pick out for, for him. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, next Clifftop. So Clifftop next okay. year. Um, well, when that comes out and all the, everything's in place, let me know. And I'll, I'll share that too. So if you follow me on social media, yeah, uh, I, yeah, it's a great, great idea. Yeah. So that's that'll, that's a new heel that I'm going to try too, and it's kind of like a boat heel, which I'm really excited about that. Um, I've got a various number of peg head shapes. You know, you, if you look at the website, you can see um, you can kind of like, you know, if you want to do custom work, you can design different different peg shapes, designs, different heel design, different types of wood. You can do a custom like you and I did. You can pick a model and then customize it, or you can do custom, or you can just build it buy one or you can just show up and make one or yeah, you buy one off the show make one. yeah the options are limitless <laughs> yeah yeah so as far as music goes uh what's some of your favorite guys out there doing it as far as picking and i'd say my biggest influence is probably riley bogus okay um he's just round peak guy from walker town north carolina he's a very well known banjo player he's Good, become good friends over the years. Um, I've taken his workshop a number of times and he comes here to the folk school a lot. And, and I just love his playing. It's like Kyle Creed, it's round peak, it's very melodic, very noty. It's not like a lot of chords or frailing. It's like a very distinct um, dis distinction between the notes. And you play like a melody, you kind of double the melody with a fiddle, which okay. I just love. That's my, my favorite style. Um, and I've learned a lot from him. I play with a pick too. I've I've started. I you know some people do that, some people don't. But I carved them. I get these little picks and I make them fit my finger, and then I carve the ends down with my pocket knife. And uh, <laughs> I was going to ask you where you got that because I noticed yeah. you playing with that. And that just makes you can hit every note just perfectly, and it's got a really good tone. The the metal ones you'll hear a little clink like a kind of a metallic sound to it, but these plastic ones are real warm and real, and they're very clean clean sounding right um so yeah Kyle Creed Riley Boggess if you ever had one album get Liberty by Kyle Creed it's the best album, banjo album ever in my opinion um those are my <laughs> my guys I also love Troublesome Creek like I was saying of course the Freight Hoppers those are some good fr friends and I love their music David Bass is I love playing with him he's probably probably my favorite fiddler he's just amazing um yeah that's probably my biggest influences I would say yeah that's great. And that's cool that they're all pretty local to the region. Yeah, they're fairly wow. local to the region. Yeah, the region. Yeah. Um, Steve lived up in Boston um, but, uh, before he passed. But um, the other guys, Riley lives in uh, out east. Um, David lives out east also, but they're both living in North Carolina. Um, but yeah, check all those guys out if you haven't already. Yeah. Well, man. Appreciate it once I, again. Thank it, you, man. I saw this when I would come around the corner today, and my face was just yeah. like <laughs> jaw dropping. I couldn't even fathom what I was getting it's myself yours. into. Enjoy it, play it. But yeah, it. yep. All the links are below. Check out the website, like we said, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the next one. And we'll see you next time. Yep. Thanks for everything, man. I really appreciate it.